Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white Disturbed Spirits deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of new cards from Innistrad and Midnight Hunt. At 2 mana we've got Danik Pious Apprentice, a 2-3 legendary creature with lifelink, saying cards in graveyards can be the targets of spells or abilities, potentially prevents the opponent from messing with our graveyard and disrupting or disturb synergies. And Danik himself has Disturb for 4 mana. We can cast Danik out of the graveyard for its Disturb cost, in which case it will enter the battlefield as Danik Pious Apparition. Still has a mana value of 2, but it's a 3 2 legendary spirit soldier with flying, saying whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyards from anywhere, we get to investigate, meaning we get to make a clue token we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card. And we're very good at enabling Danik's ability, since we have a lot of ways to put creatures in our own graveyard. And then if the Pious Apparition is dealt with, it will get exiled afterwards. Then we've got more Disturbed Synergies with the Devoted Graph Keeper, a 2-mana two 2-1 two that when it enters a battlefield mills 2 cards. And then whenever we cast a spell from our graveyard, we get to tap target creature we don't control. And between all the Disturbed creatures and our flashback cards, we've got plenty of ways to cast cards out of our graveyard to get rid of any blockers. And we can even do so at instant speed thanks to the Faithful Mending, so that's potentially a way to tap an attacker from the opponent as well. And then we can disturb the Graph Keeper for 3 mana, turns into Departed Soul Keeper, a 3-1 flyer that can only block creatures with flying. And then we already mentioned Faithful Mending, a 2 mana instant that gains 2 life, lets us draw 2 cards and then discard 2 cards. So it's card disadvantage, unless of course we're putting Disturb and Flashback cards in our graveyard, in which case it kind of equals out. And then we can also Flashback Faithful Mending itself for 3 mana so we can do it all over again. And then another key card in the deck is Patrician Geist, a 3 mana 2 2 spirit knight with flying, giving other spirits we control plus 1 plus 1. And of course, all the disturbed creatures are spirits on the backside. And spells we cast from our graveyard cost 1 generic mana less to cast. So, very relevant discount for flashback and all the disturbed creatures, which can be a little bit pricey otherwise. Then we also have two copies of Vega the Watcher, a 3 mana 2 2 legendary bird spirit. It has flying and says whenever we cast a spell from anywhere other than our hand, we get to draw a card. So, this used to be good with the foretell mechanic, but it's also great with flashback and disturb, which will also draw cards with Vega. And then looking at the rest of our deck at 1 mana, we've got a Lunark Veteran, a 1 1 saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we gain 1 life. And we're very good at generating lots of small creatures, so we can gain a lot of life with the Veteran, which can also disturb for 2 mana, turning into Luminous Phantom, a 1 1 spirit with flying, saying whenever another creature we control leaves the battlefield, we gain 1 life. Then we've got the full playset of Consider. Let's just look at the top card of our library. We can put it into our graveyard and then draw a card. So another way to potentially get a bit of value by putting a disturbed creature in our graveyard. And by having all these cheap spells, we're also better at enabling Clarion Spirit, the 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Spirit, saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one -one white Spirit creature token with flying, which will also get pumped up by the Patrician Geist, and can make it very difficult for the opponent to race, especially with a Lunark Veteran in play alongside it. Then we've got the full playset of a Malevolent Hermit, a 2-mana two 2-1, two that we can pay a blue mana and sacrifice to counter target a non-creature spell unless its controller pays 3 generic mana. So great answer to expensive cards like Alrun's Epiphany for instance. And then we can also disturb it for 3 mana, turning it into a 2-2 two -two Benevolent Geist with flying, saying non-creature spells we control cannot be countered. And then topping off our curve, besides Patrician Geist and Vega, we also have two copies of Skyclave Apparition as just a nice removal spell that also happens to be a spirit, so it has a bit of synergy with the Patrician Geist as well. And then the mana base includes all eight dual lands in blue-white, with Deserted Beach and the blue-white pathway, then eight basic islands and eight basic plains. Don't really have any creature lands, since we have so many ways to use our mana in the late game with all our disturbed creatures and flashback. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. On the draw with a keepable hand. Turn 1 champion of the perished, so a zombie deck. Turn 2 Jadar, it's gonna keep on growing the champion. 
I'll go ahead and play Danik. Lines up well against the 2-2 creatures from our opponent. Alright, opponent's gonna go exploring the dungeon. They can hit us with Champion of the Perished. And I guess my opponent wants to keep growing the champion, so still sends the Decay token, even though it gains me two life. Alright, Apparition, a good draw. Probably exile one of their creatures. Question is Champion versus Jadar. I'm thinking Champion, since Jadar doesn't do much at the moment. And I'll leave Danik on defense, even though hitting for two is also reasonable. All right, so I guess I was better off attacking. All right, so Danik attacks, and then I can go Clarion Spirits. Second Denik in the off chance they trade it, but probably just uh, Faithful Mending and discard Denik so we can disturb it, and then we can have the legendary Pious Apparition alongside the Pious Apprentice in play. And then Apparition could also attack, I guess. Opponent takes it. And Faithful Mending. Sets up Vega, the Watcher, to draw cards. Alright, some excellent pickups, so I'll discard my two Disturbed creatures. And then next turn I can play Patrician Geist plus Disturbed Graph Keeper, or I could play Vega first if I want to draw more cards. Take a hit from the zombie, that's fine. Does trigger the Death Priests, so pretty cool synergy with Jadar. Another Clarion Spirits. Alright, now I'm kind of liking Clarion Spirit Vega and then wait on the Patrician Geist until next turn, which will have plenty of Spirits to pump up as well. And then Danik, still good to attack. The Skyclave Apparition attack. Maybe we'll keep that one back, although it would be fine to trade for anything on the board, really, including the Skeleton. Death Priest only triggers in the opponent's end step. I guess reason not to trade Apparition is that next turn it would get plus one from Patrician Geist. Alright, it's a lot of spirits. Opponent's got a Draco Lich to flash in end of turn. Makes sense. And a second Death Priest. Not too many zombies in play at least. And they won't be able to make two skeletons, only one end of turn. So about to take 11. But is my opponent that next turn? It's gonna be somewhat close, but I can also play a long game to be fair, so maybe jumping is still fine. Opponent does get to make a skeleton, which is gonna be a 3-3, so they've got some powerful synergies themselves. But this is gonna be cool too. Attrition Geists. And then go for the Pious Apparition, make some tokens, draw a card. And it's going to be tough for the opponent to keep up with our flyers.
opponents in the Tomb of Annihilation, which makes sense. Goes for the Oubliette. So they want to complete it as quickly as possible. Strangely enough, we got to trigger Danik, because their opponent discarded an extra Jadar. But they seem pretty dead on board to me here. Although, credit to them, they did complete their dungeon. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Got a keepable hand. Might fire off turn one and consider. Although now that I drew Clarion Spirit, I'll hang on to it. And then turn two, maybe Graph Keeper. Turn three, Clarion Spirit, plus consider. Opponent on black whites, Clerics. The Cleric of Life's Bond. Yeah, that might get out of hand in a second. Although, some nice creatures revealed by the Graph Keeper. Righteous Valkyrie, yep. Yeah. Gonna have to draw my Skyclave Apparition to deal with it. Don't need more lands. And we'll pass. Next turn I could play Patrician Geist and then replay Lunark Veteran. Opponent with a Tabarox. I'll take two. And then... Yeah, I think we'll go with the play we described. Can also tap down some blockers from the opponents. Thanks to the Graph Keeper. And try to get the opponent's life to a little lower. So the Righteous Valkyrie isn't as threatening. Opponent took it. Probably not the best matchup for Malevolent Hermits. Opponent mostly a creature deck. Thirst kill spirits. Alright, so step one probably start with consider. And Vega I'll definitely keep. And then I could play Vega now, but I'll be unable to play Hermit out of the graveyard. So maybe that means I should just play another Hermit and pass. Or I could play Vega anyway, since they're more likely to want to kill Geist. And then next turn I can play Hermit, tap a creature down, draw a card. And make some more progress. I guess the upside of Hermit is that it also could have protected Patrician Geist. As we see, it kicked Thirst. That's alright. So, could Graph Keeper and then tap two creatures down. And then do I play a land out in case I draw a particular one drop? Sure. Right, Danix not bad. And then trading Vega for Tabarax, probably not worth it, so we'll just send Graph Keeper. I wouldn't mind finding a Faithful Mending, which represents a lot of extra cards with Vega and all these disturbed creatures in hand. 
Elixir gonna start getting a life, and there we go, Faithful Mending. So, step one, play Faithful Mending. And then do I discard both Disturbed Creatures? Or maybe start with one, I can flash back Faithful Mending too. But I like having Dunnick in the graveyard. And then I could go for Dunnick draw with Vega. Sure. Probably gonna keep land in hands. Send both Graph Keepers. Vega probably still stays back. And again, probably hold the land to discard to Mending, although we're getting to the point where I'm pretty likely to draw an extra land. Cleric class now putting counters whenever they gain life. Okay, so a lot of options available here. Probably start by flashing back Mending. Time two creatures down. Draw cards. Patrician guys, an awesome draw as well. So I want to discard another disturbed creature probably. Get to make a clue. And then don't quite have enough mana for Patrician Geist plus Disturb. Uh, but Patrician Geist pumping my spirits is still a pretty big game here. And probably just attack with everyone. Put on blocks Danik. And still dies. Alright, sweet. So yeah, got to see our synergies in action here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Probably gonna hang on to consider as an easy way to double spell with Clarion Spirits. Just play this tapped now. And then could go... Turn two spirits, turn to another Clarion Spirit, plus consider, trigger both. Or I could kick things off with a Graph Keeper if we fear a removal spell. Opponent mono blue so far. So I guess I'm not too afraid of a removal spell here. Might get countered by Jewelry Disruption, which it does. Fair enough. And a Rune Crab, so opponent on the mill deck. Well, not something I mind when playing a Disturbed deck. So many ways to leverage the graveyard. So this, they cannot counter with Disruption. And if they want to counter Consider, that's okay. I'll still get a token from Clarion Spirits. And what am I looking for? Maybe the three mana Lord to pump up my spirits. Anything that can let us beat down and deal more damage. It's gonna be a Fading Hope instead, killing my token. And yeah, Patrician Geist is exactly what I wanted. Put that in hand and then next turn I could play it, plus Disturb Veteran for one mana, which will trigger Clarion Spirit as well. Although my opponent keeping up all their mana makes it likely that they have a counter spell. Instead, Fading Hope bouncing my spirit right now. Alright, in that case, probably just double Clarion Spirits or Clarion Spirits into Graph Keeper, which I don't care if it gets countered. This even helps the opponents with the mill plan. So I don't really want to cast it. 
So let's just go for second clarion spirit, get this counter spell out of the opponent's hand if they have one. And if it's another bound spell, then we're pretty happy. Alright. Evolving Wild's gonna mill for six. And then there's also Field of Ruin representing an extra Ruin Cramp trigger. So probably want to avoid milling myself. And then next turn we can go for Patrician Geists. And try to present as much damage as possible. Opponent is down to two cards, still 34 cards in library. Now it's getting a little confusing what's my hand and what's my graveyard, but I think we'll manage. So, yeah, I could go Clarion Spirits into Patrician Geist, maybe that's still better than Disturbing. And then next turn I'll start playing my creatures out of the graveyard. And spirits can now attack past Ruin Crab. And that's quite the army we got all of a sudden. Alright, Puna's gotta consider. Considering their options. Can also play Hermit at some point, which can counter, let's say, Hideous Laughter. So we don't get milled out that way. Now that we have a board presence, it's all about preventing the opponent from milling us out in any way possible. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, they're just too far behind on board. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Veteran into veteran into... Most likely Patrician Geist. Actually would be happy if the veteran died or if we picked up a way to put more cards in our graveyard. And there we go, Graph Keeper's perfect. And there's a Disturbed Creature we can get back. So that can also tap something with the Graph Keeper in play. So Apparition cannot exile the token, could exile the Ranger class itself. I'm not too terrified of a fight spell since their opponent's not playing Snowland, so Blizzard Brawl on Patrician Geist, not as much of a concern. So I think we just send the Graph Keeper, play Patrician Geists. And then next turn I can maybe Disturb for 2 mana as opposed to 3. Although also reasonable to just disturb the Graph Keeper first, which then gets in more damage if we play Patrician Geist. But I could see the ability to tap down a blocker being relevant as well. Alright, opponent's gonna fly the wolf. Fair enough, so up to a 3-3 now. And our opponent gets to venture into the dungeon. So blue-green venture deck then. Could remove flying by exiling the enchantment with apparition. Or I could try to block with, let's say, graph keeper if I also get rid of ranger class first. Although that's going to take some time to set up. So... I think getting rid of the flying enchantment is probably okay. And then the Lunark veterans can shun block all day long. Yeah, I'll happily shun block. Just gives me more flying threats. 
that also get pumped up by Patrician Geist. Sentinel could be pretty annoying here as a reach creature, but I get to tap it down with Graph Keeper. And our opponent does have Blizzard Brawl to kill my Geists. That's too bad. But I can still disturb both creatures. Tap down the Sentinel. Opponent already down to 7 here. Consider likely to find more ways to play something out of the graveyard. Tap down Sentinel. And then I want to start holding lands in hands in case we draw Faithful Mending. So I have cards to discard. Alright, another Blizzard Brawl. Our opponent should probably put some Snow Lands in their deck. So Graph Keeper in the graveyard, so we don't have a way to tap down creatures anymore. Let's consider first Hermit. Can go to the graveyard. And drew another Graph Keeper, perfect. Play that. Mill over Denik. Disturb a Graph Keeper. Could also tap down the Wolf. And then the Apparition could maybe attack. Sure. And then I'll send in everyone. And next turn I might be able to tap down two more creatures. We're at 28, gain so much life off our veteran. Really shows how difficult it is for creature decks to races. Field trip. Going for the discard modes, hoping to draw removal, and they did. They found a third Blizzard Brawl. Okay, so now I don't get to tap down anything. But I still get to generate quite a bit of value with Denik. And then we'll make another 3-1 flyer. And then next turn I can maybe attack for lethal. Find a path. Ventures into the dungeon once again. They can make a goblin. Level up ranger class. But they still seem dead on board to me. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a decent hand. Probably play my tapped land so I can play turn to Graph Keeper, usually the preferred play over Hermit. Make use of my white mana and then next turn I could go Veteran plus Hermits. As we didn't mill anything useful. Opponent with a turn one Shambling Ghasts. So it looks like a controlling snow deck. Another Shambling Ghast. Denik the draw. Still gonna stick to the plan, I think. Off a Veteran plus Hermits. Although, these are all one toughness creatures, so they don't line up great against Shambling Ghast. So there's something to be said for playing Denik. And then, uh, can still play Consider. And then I'm okay drawing a land, so I'm okay putting Disturbed Creatures in my graveyard. Alright, opponent's gonna take out Denik. That works. And hit me for two. And then land I'll keep. Mending is interesting too. Could just uh, play the Pious Apparition here. 
And then next turn, Faithful Mending, for instance, could allow me to discard a creature, make a clue, get some card advantage. Disciple gonna make me discard. That's one way to trigger Danik. And I think one Hermit can go hang on to Veteran as a cheaper play. Although Hermit could be key at countering like a Blood on the Snow at some point. And another Shambling Gas, so lots of 1-1s. One Lunark Veteran is looking decent. It's an interesting spot. Danix definitely attacking. So maybe I just play a veteran. Or maybe even a hermit. And then I can still mending. And maybe counter something with a hermit. Could also crack my clue. My opponent moves straight to combat. I'll uh, take four, I guess. I'll be able to gain a lot of life with double veteran. All right, another disciple, which makes me discard. So now I could just discard a veteran, make a clue, and then crack a clue. Opponent's got two mana left, unlikely to be relevant. So maybe I should crank the clue first in case I draw a creature that I would rather discard. Well, that answers that question. And then Danik specifically cares about creatures, so discarding and amending won't generate a clue. Patrician Geist is looking good too. So I could play Patrician Geist and then disturb the veteran, making a 2 2, pumping Danik. Taps a creature in the process as well. Or I could wait on Patrician Geist, play another Lunark Veteran, or maybe even two first. Leave up my Hermit plus Clue token so I can counter whatever comes our way. And then I'll gain more life of the double veteran when I go for Geists and Disturb next turn. Take three. Turgrid's God of Fright, that happens. Cannot counter that with our Hermits. But I can play Patrician Geists and then play either Hermit or Veteran out of the graveyard. Let's go for Hermit, which is more mana efficient. Although I guess if I go for Veteran I get to keep up the Hermit's ability in play, so that's probably still worth it. All right. And this gets to tap Turgrid, so I can maybe set up some attacks. Let's see, does the Graph Keeper want to attack? Sure. Don't have to, but it gives me more stuff to potentially disturb, make a clue token with Denik. The Veteran's probably better off staying on defense. Right, opponent does go for the trade. Opponent falls to eight. I get a clue token, gain some life. And I can still counter whatever big Non-creature spell or opponent plays, and they're facing a damage in the air with Patrician Geist. So, yeah, I'll take it. And yeah, we get to untap and attack for eight in the air. So our opponent had a bit of an anemic draw, although we would have been able to counter any sweepers they might have had. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And not particularly exciting, but double consider could turn into pretty much anything, so 
I'll keep and then fine to fire off one consider right away. Maybe find a better two drop than Hermit. And we'll see what we're up against. A mono green so far. And Geist, I will draw. So could go for Faithful Mending, could double consider even. I guess there's nothing I really want to discard to Mending yet, so we'll go with Double Consider. Or I could play out Hermit, which is also reasonable, although discarding Hermit to Mending could also be a play we want to make. I guess we'll get on the board. Opponent didn't do anything on turn 2, so maybe they're planning to cast some expensive non-creature spells we can counter. And then I'm not in a hurry to play Patrician Guys since there's nothing I can play at a discount from my graveyard or spirits I can pump. Rebuke killing Hermit's fine. And now I also don't mind disturbing the Hermit. Alternatively, could maybe fire off one consider. If I don't find any better two drops, go for Mending end of turn, which can discard a second copy. I guess the upside of waiting on Hermit is getting the discount, but at the same time, if I play the Geist now, then I can maybe hit for three next turn. So definitely a lot of options here. Opponent appears to be a team or ramp deck, so they're probably going to try and ramp into Alvin's Epiphany, which is where having Hermit in play is going to be useful. So... Yeah, we'll hit for two, play Hermit, and then keep up a couple instants. And then I gotta start putting some more power and toughness in play, so we can kill the opponents before they can eventually deal with my Hermit and take over with Alrun's Epiphany. Or just beat us down with Cultivator. So they've got 7 mana in play right now. Take 3. And I think I fire off a Mending over Consider. Consider could be better if I find Clarion Spirit as a way to double spell and easier to kind of fit into my curve. There's Clarion Spirit, so Mending can go. And then I maybe discard Danik with the plan of then playing it out of the graveyard. Once we have maybe a Patrician Geist. Sure. Vega could also draw a lot of cards. But I would like to hit my land drop right now. So I could go Clarion Spirits, consider, try to find a land, make a token, still keep the Hermit available. And we'll draw the planes. And hit for two. Okay, so we're starting to make a bit of progress on the board. And in terms of our game plan. Opponent moves to combat, so I'm kind of thinking they might have a burned the house down, which they can now pay for even if I sack Hermit and they're just trying to squeeze extra damage in. At the same time, I also don't really want to block. So I guess we'll take it and then see if they have it. They don't? Okay. Now... Could be a good window for Patrician Geists. And then I get to keep up all my instants, or I could fire off Consider to trigger Clarion Spirits. Hope to draw land, which still keeps Faithful Mending end of turn available, which would also 
potentially draw a card with Vega next turn. Got a lot of options. Yeah, let's, uh, let's play Patrician Geists. Attack. And see how this develops. Opponent takes it. Consider keeping a permit. And then would rather draw land here, I think. Opponent is at six, so they'll need to do something. And then our opponent concedes. Yeah, very much possible they had Alrun's Epiphany in hand. Although I guess the fact that they didn't foretell it makes that less likely. But uh, yeah, Hermit potentially playing a big role, even if it wasn't immediately noticeable. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn two, I have to decide between Danik and probably Clarion Spirits. Doesn't seem like I'm going to be double spelling anytime soon, so we'll go with Danik. Upside of Clarion Spirit is that it gets plus one plus one from Patrician Geist. Alright, so... Now... I'm sort of liking Clarion Spirits to then next turn set up Clarion Spirit into Hermit, trigger both, and then the Patrician Geist will pump up all the 1-1 one -one flyers. Opponent on a banned ramp deck with Felidar Retreat. So they'll be able to make lots of tokens on the ground. We'll try to take over in the skies. And another Clarion Spirit to draw. Probably still better to play Hermit since I'm not triggering the other spirit here anyway. Reason to still play Clarion Spirit is if I draw a one drop, then Patrician Geist could potentially enable the uh, Clarion Spirits to trigger again. But now if I draw land, I get to go Clarion Spirit into Geist and smash. Second retreat. Okay. But is it going to be too little too late? I could go for Mending. Or I could just play Clarion Spirit first and then Mending ensures that I trigger everyone. Do I kill them next turn is a question. Or I can just play Geist and keep up the Hermit's ability. Which is probably good enough here. Opponent falls to five. We can counter any non-creature spell they play, like a sweeper or... Maybe an extra turn card. Although they wouldn't be able to quite cast that here anyway. And then the flyers can hopefully take over. And Druid class resolves. And a cultivator, sure. So they'll have two mana afterwards, six life. So they're still dead to the Flyers. And I can't think of much here for two mana that saves them. Opponent passes, and I can just move to combat. Hit them for six in the air, and that's game. Alright, so we get to see our blue-white Disturbed Spirits deck in action. Definitely a lot of ways you can approach the deck. Could even go as far as to include a main deck Doomscar, because against control decks where it's dead, we can still discard it to Faithful Mending. That's one of the advantages of having a looting effect in the main. And then against creature decks it can be a blowout. Plus we can kind of bait the opponent into overextending by playing a couple creatures out. We can still wipe the board and then get back on the board very quickly thanks to all our disturbed creatures. So it's kind of a perfect card to have in a deck like this, maybe as a one or two of, just to catch the opponent off guard. And then could always include more creature removal, Skyclave Apparition if needed. Although the more disturbed synergies we have, the better. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.